Uh, it's pretty prevalent, actually. Um, you know, we see probably actually treatable strokes uh, five or six a month that can be treated with TPA. We do see a lot of strokes that don't meet guidelines for TPA. We actually have a lot of people that come in late uh, as far as uh, warning signs. And we see a lot of what they call uh, TIA, which is the transient attacks or the mini strokes that we see actually a good bit of. Um, we see a lot of elderly people who may have stroke symptoms for, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours and not really realize the warning signs and then family bring them in late. Um, and we do see a lot of those. Um, but uh, actually treatable stroke, you know, uh, probably about five or six a month actually um, that we can give TPA to and treat aggressively. Uh, so those are the ones that we are really targeting, you know, as far as treatment and options and warning signs and getting the public to know, you know, wh why they should come to the emergency department early. Now they don't know the warning signs. Um, they, you know, the, the inherent thing is to avoid going to the hospital if they don't have to and, and you know some people really don't recognize or or may have you know altered mental status to where they may not feel that they uh, should seek treatment and um, sometimes it's the uh, family members who recognize that they they may be slurring their words or they may be a little bit weaker than they were before or something like that 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 caused them to you know bring them to the emergency department for treatment. They can be somewhat subtle sometimes. Sometimes they're very dramatic. Sometimes, you know, the, the, the classic symptoms of the facial slurring or facial droop and the slurring speech and the, the one sided weakness and so forth are, are the very dramatic signs that we see. You know, people do bring them to the, to the emergency department quickly. Sometimes the, the symptoms can be somewhat subtle, you know, just a little bit of a slurring of the words, a little bit of a facial droop, a little bit of a weakness of an extremity, a hand or a, or a lower leg or something like that. So sometimes the, the, weak, the signs and symptoms can be somewhat subtle. Um, if it's a person who doesn't walk a lot or do a lot with uh, other people, if they're you know not seen frequently like the elderly that are seen on an occasional basis, and then they get them up to walk or something, notice that they can't walk as well. You know those are things that we see frequently as far as delayed presentation to the ER. So the main thing is the the recognition of warning signs. You know, if, uh, things like headache or uh, slurred speech, facial droop, uh, weakness on one side of the body, uh, even just generalized weakness that is more noticeable uh, should be evaluated and seen promptly in the emergency department. Uh, treatment options are, are somewhat limited after a delayed presentation and unfortunately uh, with stroke care today, you know, early recognition is the key and, and getting them to the emergency department to be evaluated quickly so that we can initiate treatment if, if it's within a three-hour window uh, for TPA. Um, there are guidelines and, and indications and contraindications, but for most cases of TPA or, or stroke that are TPA eligible stroke, then, uh, you know, three hours is the window that we're shooting for for recognition of signs. Well, it's, it's kind of an arbitrary number, I guess, but it's, it's a number that's been derived uh, that the, the complications uh, in, in giving TPA rise abruptly after three hours of, of delay um, so that if, there are, um, if there's more delay than three hours, then, then uh, there can be some serious complications such as bleeding with TPA in the brain and things like that. So, you know, we try to get them here, get them diagnosed quickly, uh, by CT scan and by evaluation by an emergency physician and then and get the uh, stroke team initiated. TPA is a um, actual inherent chemical in the body that, that has kind of been captured chemically and mass produced. Uh, it's uh, basically a tissue plasminogen activator. It's a uh, biochemical that actually breaks clot within our own system that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just used in a much higher quantity um, when we give it through the IV. Uh, and basically the, the purpose of that is to break up clot that may have formed from either heart attack or stroke or what have you. Um, but uh, we do use it uh, uh, mostly for stroke here, uh, not much for heart and uh, 
and lung causes, but um, it is, like I said, a, it's an inherent chemical that, that flows through your body on a day-to-day -day basis, just used in more concentrated and, and higher dosing in this sense. There's actually a long list of indications and contraindications. Some blood pressure uh, measurements come into play. The, the severity of the stroke symptoms. If the stroke symptoms are resolving, uh, then those are things that you know may inter, uh, cause us not to use TPA uh, because we don't want to cause harm, and it is a somewhat dangerous drug. So if the symptoms are improving with with treatment and um, uh, or improving without treatment, I should say, uh, then we may not give TPA. Um, but uh, for those cases where they meet the three-hour window, there are no contraindications to giving TPA, and um, they have fairly catastrophic stroke symptoms. Um, you know, it can be a real lifesaver and a real improvement to their outcome. In situations where you know you may have a total paralysis of one side of your body. Uh, any improvement in that would be a plus and you know those people who uh, have improvement of those symptoms can go on and live a more meaningful life, uh, can have less mortality uh, associated with their illness and uh, be much, lead a much happier life you know if they're not debilitated. Uh, it's mainly the, the, the focus of it is to prevent um, life debilitation which is what, what we see with stroke. Um, you know long-term care that is needed if, if patients don't have resolution of symptoms, uh, you know, burdens on their, themselves and their families, you know, with stroke symptoms. So uh, the main goal is to improve quality of care and quality of life uh, with TPA use. And, um, you know, it's not 100 percent treatment. It doesn't happen and, and work every time. But for those patients that do go on to a recovery, uh, their, their improvement is substantial and their, you know, their life has changed for, for the better. Yeah, you know, and, and I think it, it hurts the families a little bit too because they may not have realized or they thought, well, we'll just give it a little bit more time and see if it improves. And, and when it doesn't and they come in late and we have to kind of say that there's nothing much we could do, you know, obviously it does impact the families and, and they do take it hard. We take it hard. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice when you're able to give someone treatment for a, a disease that it may have an actual meaningful outcome and having that ability to do so, but having your hands tied with not able to give it, you know, being able to give it, you know, three hours after or more is, is, is somewhat frustrating, yeah. The main things are if, if people have, you know, one-sided weakness, slurred speech, Headache, headache is a large one. You know, if, if they're obviously changed in their, in their mental status uh, from more confused, um, you know, like I said, you know, inability to walk or ambulate or use hands to, to pick up an object, those are things that we want to, you know, key in on and, and get the lay people to know. Um, you know, the, the, the main thing, like I said, is just early recognition of signs and getting them, getting them to the emergency department quickly. Not really. You know, stroke kind of affects all comers. Um, it's the number two cause of, of death worldwide, and um, it probably will overcome all comers of, as far as cause of death uh, soon. And uh, it's, it's pretty much un unilateral across the board as far as women versus men. Um, it's, uh, the brain works very similarly, you know, in all human beings. So if there's, you know, unilateral symptoms uh, that, that signify a large stroke or um, slurred speech and such. It's usually, you know, the same for men as it is for women. Um, you know, and it really isn't any different epidemiology as far as, you know, men coming in later than women or anything like that. Uh, so it's, it doesn't really discriminate uh, as far as picking their population for, for disease. Well, I think a lot of it is, is uh, lifestyle right now, uh, you know, as far as uh, obesity, hypertension, um, those are high, co high cholesterol, smoking, those are all things that can cause more stroke. Uh, stroke is caused by thromboembolic and thromboplaque that, or, or plaque forms in the brain, and if there's more um, 
high cholesterol and hypertension and things like that that can contribute to um, plaque rupture and plaque formation, then that's I think why we see more of it nowadays than we did before. Just more or less the sedentary lifestyle. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, they do fit together. They fit, you know, it's, it's a vascular disease uh, throughout the body. It's just more or less a different location. Um, but it's, it's pretty much the same mechanism of, of cause. There are two different types of stroke. There's the ischemic type stroke where TPA would be indicated, and then there are strokes where there are bleeding uh, causes of the, in the brain. Um, people who are on anticoagulants and uh, so forth may have bleeding causes of stroke, and uh, in those cases we definitely would not want to give TPA. Uh, however, they may have a surgical cause that may be fixable, such as an aneurysm clipping or something uh, interventional by the neurosurgeon that could be uh, life-saving or um, uh, preventative as far as further damage to the brain. Immediately on arrival to the ED, uh, get the person to the CT scanner just because time is of the essence. Uh, the CT scan will tell us whether it is more of an ischemic type stroke versus a bleeding type stroke. Uh, the blood will show up very brightly on the CAT scan. Um, this, is be, this will be read by a radiologist on a quick basis and then uh, we'll uh, institute treatment based on that. And, uh, but yes, if, it's, if the CT scan shows bleeding on the scan, then we would approach more of a neurosurgical approach to the patient. Stroke alert basically, uh, you know, here in our emergency department, we're very aggressive with heart cases and very aggressive with some other things like trauma. Uh, and the, the point of those cases is to institute care rapidly. Uh, we have uh, an approach with the trauma team where, you know, the trauma team takes care of the patient immediately on arrival to the ER. Uh, studies are, are instituted quickly and uh, results are obtained quickly so that care can be instituted as fast as possible. Um, in the past, uh, patients really didn't get this with stroke, and uh, through study and, and so forth, we know that stroke patients did poorly because care was not initiated quickly and, and diagnosis was not obtained rapidly. Uh, so uh, we're trying to be as aggressive with those cases as we are with heart patients and with trauma patients just because if we can obtain that information to institute care quickly, uh, those patients can do much better in the outcomes and if in the cases where we give TPA uh, it could be a life-saving measure so you know we do try to you know diagnose those problems as quick as possible uh, determine whether they are eligible for TPA and then um, move on with treatment and care your risk does imp uh, increase with uh, further strokes if you have one or or a TIA or a mini stroke you are at more risk for other strokes uh, if you have documented or known vascular disease such as prior heart attack or diabetes which is a cause of sometimes heart disease and vascular disease um, then you are more at risk and, and your, your chances do increase with possible further strokes Well, uh, pretty much like I said, lifestyle changes, uh, watching your cholesterol, exercise, watching your blood pressure, um, those are all things that can help your, your risk of decreasing your odds of having strokes. So uh, it's more or less lifestyle modification. TIA is kind of like a, a warning sign. Uh, it's like a warning light on the dashboard of your car that says, you know, something may be coming your way. It's a, it's a transient attack of symptoms meaning that um, uh, in cases of ischemic CVA or, or stroke, uh, the blood supply to that area of the brain is compromised and the, the stroke symptoms develop. In TIA or mini stroke, that compromise is, a, is a, not a complete compromise and that, therefore the symptoms may come and then go away. A patient may have improvement of symptoms uh, within hours or even minutes and sometimes they'll come to the emergency department with uh, stroke symptoms but have completely resolved within you know five to ten minutes so we usually tell people at that time that you know they are at high risk for stroke because they've already had stroke like symptoms and that um, they need some specialized treatment and, and some uh, uh, changes in their medications and, and some mo lifestyle modification to prevent further uh, risk of stroke
as far as age goes with stroke, uh, like I said before, there really is no discrimination, but uh, uh, we are seeing a little bit younger uh, of a population with stroke type symptoms. I've seen some 40 year olds with strokes uh, that are legitimate strokes. And a lot of it has to do with you know the new you know, the newer onset of diabetes as, as younger people, uh, obesity and, and smoking and that such that causes the vascular disease. Um, but like I said, you know we do see some people that have that as a younger uh, age frame, especially younger females, people that may be um, on uh, hormone replacement or birth control pills more risk for thromboembolic type situations. Um, so those are, there are some risk factors with that as well. Um, but uh, most of it comes down to you know, early diabetes, high blood pressure that's undetected or untreated, and uh, people who use tobacco or smoke. Uh, those in combination can be somewhat dangerous. Diabetes uh, basically causes your, your blood vessels to be more prone to develop th uh, plaque and, and thrombus and uh, uh, it's just a, a, a disease process that can cause just profound vascular disease throughout the entire uh, vascular system so um, that you know makes you high risk for things such as heart disease, stroke, um, you know those kind of things that are vascular problems. Essentially, a TIA and mini stroke are the same thing. Um, like I said before, you know, it, even though it's called a mini stroke, it really is not a full-blown stroke. Uh, that area of the brain, even though is is temporarily affected, uh, usually in those situations there are complete there is complete resolution of symptoms uh, with TIA. So, uh, you know, even though it's called a mini stroke, it's really a transient attack, meaning that the symptoms come and then go. Uh, but it is a, a warning sign that there are there are some problems there with the vascular circulation to the brain and, and in areas particularly where your stroke symptoms are developing. So um, it's like I said, pretty much the precursor to stroke, meaning that if you have pre-stroke or TIA symptoms, that you know your risk of developing a full-blown stroke or a stroke in evolution is quite high. Yeah, I mean, I, I think here at Conoma, you know, we've, we've tried to improve the care that we give through the emergency department in many ways. Uh, you know, I think we've done that with our trauma care here. We've done that with our cardiovascular care here. And this is just the next step in progression as far as develop, you know, developing um, state-of-the-art stroke care for our surrounding hospitals and surrounding patients. And, uh, you know, um, when I look at what we did three years ago as opposed to now, you know, there's quite a dramatic improvement in the way we treat stroke here especially and um, keeping in line with other, you know, tertiary care facilities and larger facilities that, you know, treat stroke aggressively, I think, uh, to, to have that as our goal, I think, you know, the stroke alert and the, the stroke care that we're, we're beginning to have here is, is online with that. Um, you know, the stroke alert, uh, it, it's a new process. It's stuff that we are doing that we hadn't done only you know months ago. Uh, so there are ups and downs, but uh, for the most part, I think that you know it's delivering care quickly and appropriately to those patients that need it, um, and it's uh, improving the outcome for patients as far as their quality of life and quality of uh, care. I think the 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 main thing with stroke uh, and and early recognition is the the recognition of the signs. Um, you know, some people, you know, feel that they should not come to the emergency department. They feel that it may not be an emergency. Uh, this is a definite emergency. This is something that needs to have emergency care, needs to be treated immediately and appropriately. And uh, the outcome and the deb debilitation, if this is not treated appropriately, can be dramatic. It's very imp important to recognize the warning signs, headache, um, unilateral loss of, of, of uh, motor function on one side of the body, paralysis, uh, difficulty speaking, difficulty making your words or, or getting the words out. Uh, those are things that need emergency care immediately and should not be delayed. Uh, so anyone who develops those symptoms should seek emergency care right away by calling 911 and having them brought to the emergency department for care. People shouldn't be embarrassed to seek emergency care. Um, that's why we have emergency departments. Uh, and you know, I would much rather tell a family that their tests all come back normal and it's nothing serious than have to tell them that you know they have a debilitating stroke that they'll have to live with the rest of their life because they didn't seek appropriate care early, uh, which sometimes happens. 
uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, sometimes people delay their treatment and feel that it will go away or that they shouldn't bother us because it may not be an emergency or a true emergency. And in those cases where, you know, treatment may not have been able to be given because of that, you know, their, their symptoms are profoundly dramatic and debilitating and to tell them that there could have been an option uh, should they have come earlier. Uh, it's, it's, it's saddening to us as professionals in, in medicine and it's, um, I'm sure, disheartening to the family and the patients. So, uh, like I said, if, if they feel that they have uh, stroke symptoms, they should seek treatment immediately and not be afraid to come to the emergency department to be evaluated.